What's up guys and welcome back to part 27 of this Mercedes minibus camper van conversion. So if you're new to the series I'll put a link up in the top corner to the playlist covering the entire conversion process of this vehicle from stripping it down to the bare chassis and building it all the way up to the camper van that you see in front of you now. So if you haven't seen the previous episodes check the playlist in the top corner and that'll show you all the previous episodes so far. So today we're really starting to get down to the bare bones left of the conversion work. I've got a little to-do list up there and even those jobs are starting to get ticked off as well. So we really are starting to get down to the bare bones of any jobs left to do. So today I'm going to be putting all of the overhead cupboard doors on. I've got the doors all ready but I've been waiting to put them on because I've been waiting for some more of the concealed type uh, cupboard lock handles like those. Just so they can then lock in place as well when they're in the overhead position. So I've got all four, six in the living area and another two in the bedroom area to put up as well. After they're up I've got a little bit of wiring to do to run some high voltage cabling from the leisure battery under the flooring to the diesel heater that's already mounted underneath the vehicle. The vehicle came with an Eberspacher D2 heater already fitted so I'm just going to be changing the power from the main van battery across to the leisure battery instead just so then the heater can be ran without having to have the vehicle engine running at the same time once all that's done because I do already have a cable ran across I just need to get it all connected up so once that's connected up I've also got a kickboard here to go underneath the kitchen units the kickboard's also going to have a 240 plug uh, fitted inside it as well and again I've already got a lot of the cabling ran underneath the units it's just a case of getting this kickboard cut down to size getting the hole cut in it for the 240 plugs and then getting that in place as well. I've also got a 240 switch over switch to get wired in as well so you can select between the Victron inverter and the 240 volt hookup so I don't have to have double the amount of plug sockets you can just flip a switch and switch between inverted or hookup power when it's uh, available as well. And then after all that's done as well, I might start going around the outside of the ve uh, vehicle, giving it a bit of a sand down, getting it ready for a bit of paint as well, because I'm probably going to do a basic respray on the vehicle as well. And finally, I've got a little bit of upholstery left here as well. I put a little poll out on YouTube to see if you guys wanted to see me doing any upholstery or not, because I glossed over all the upholstery that I've done at the back. I said I didn't really cover that much, but I put it on the poll to YouTube to see if you wanted to see any. And the vast majority of you wanted to see at least some of the upholstery in one of the updates. So with the cushions that are going to be going here, I'll also cover the upholstery on that as well. So still plenty of jobs to be cracking on with, but as I say, these are getting down to be the last jobs of the conversion. So I'm going to get some safety gear out, some tools out, get cracked on. And I say, first things first, I'll get all the overhead cabinet locker doors on. Then after they're in place, we'll crack on and start working the way through the rest of the to-do list. So let's get cracked on for the day. Right, so I've been cracking on doing a few little bits off camera. As you can see, I've got the plugs, holes drilled in and cut into the kickboard that's going to go underneath the unit itself. So there'll be a double plug down towards the bedroom area and a single plug beneath the oven as well. There's also a outlet in the cupboard as well. So if anybody wanted, to say, like a microwave or anything like that, it could be mounted in here. And that's also got the hookup point for the ignition for the hob in there as well. So I've got to do a bit of cabling underneath to run the cables from the one socket across to the other as well. Then it'll be okay to get the kickboard in place. And I've been doing this while I've just gave the overhead cupboards just another lick of paint, especially on the underside as well. Because for some reason I'd already painted the outside, not the underside as well. So they've all been given a lick of paint and while that's all drying up, that's why I've been cracking on and doing the kickboard instead. So I'm going to get some uh, electrical tools out, start getting all of this cabling fed in place for the sockets. And then by the time this is in place, the overhead cupboards should be fully dry with the paint as well. And we can crack on and get those in place as well. So I'm going to crack on and get this kickboard fully wired in and in place.
so that's the overhead cabinet doors all in place with the push button locks as well so they lock the doors in place as you can see push the button and it just opens up nicely push the button again and it goes, as I say just locks in place so that's all of the living area ones done as well as the two in the rear bedroom area as well I've also done a couple of other little bits and bobs off camera I've also got the 240 volt switch over switch in place so I can switch that switch across to the inverter side or the electric hookup side so I just have the one set of plugs running throughout the conversion and I can switch it over between inverter or hook up depending on whether you're on a campsite or while camping things like that as well and I've also got the kick plate in place with the plugs in place under there as well so that's not a bad day's job I'll probably pick it back up again tomorrow when I'm going to be doing some more upholstery I'm going to be upholstering the cushions for this sofa bed area as I say, I've already upholstered the back ones and I didn't really record that but I did put it out to YouTube to see if you guys wanted to see any of it and the poll results came back saying 75% yes, show some upholstery so the next part of this episode I'll pick it back up when I've got the mattress the, the new mattress that I've just ordered cut down, ready to upholster I'll pick it back up when we're ready to start doing some box cushion sewing so I'll pick it back up in a second when we're ready to start the upholstery Right guys, so I've got two cushions left to upholster for inside the camper van and you guys did say that you wanted to see some upholstery on one of the YouTube polls that I've put out on my channel so as I say, I've got these two cushions left to do so I'll cover these two roughly on how I'm doing the upholstery myself So first things first, ignore any background mess or anything like that It's not an episode of how clean is your home This is just a case of how I'm doing my upholstery and what I'm doing first is laying out all the fabric just on the floor in my front room laying down the uh, form on top of it and basically cutting around the section now you do need to make your measurements of the form so if for example your form is 50 wide but it's 10 deep then the measurements would have to be 70 wide because you've got the 50 wide of the form and 10 of each side so I'm going to make some measurements and do some cutouts to get the box cushion template all sorted out I'll pick it back up when I've got the template cut so you can see exactly what I mean and how I'm then going to be sewing it all together and to put it all together I've just got a basic little uh, Singer sewing machine it's an old one but it's a good one it just keeps going and going and going and it's already paid for itself because this was second hand it was only about £30 and the amount of upholstery I've had out of it so far has definitely paid for itself so first things first as I say now the form's cut and I've got the fabric rolled out I'm just going to take some basic measurements do some drawings on the fabric and cut out a few corners then I'll pick it back up when they're ready to get stuck and sewn together Right guys, so that's the basic cutout template for the box cushion for the bigger form mattress area. As you can see, I've taken little notches out of each of the corners and they're, what they're going to fold up to create nice neat corners. And to make sure that they don't slip or anything while I'm sewing them together, I've got some upholstery, double sided tape. And I'm just going to put a little strip along each edge of each cutout corner. Then when they're folded together, they won't move while I'm then transfer it over to the sewing machine and get them all sewed together as well. So I'm going to cut off four little strips of the double sided tape, put one strip on each corner all around these four corners and then we'll get it over to the sewing machine and start getting it all sewed together. Right, so as you can see I've just stuck the corners down with the double sided tape to create what's going to be the box template so now these corners are stuck down it's okay to now pick all this up get it over the sewing machine and basically sew across all of the double sided tape that I've just stuck in to be sure that all the corners are going to be nice and strong and sturdy and then once it's all together and then also going to be putting a zip in because all the upholstery that I do I do put zips in them so they're fully removable and fully washable as well so now that 
this is all fully cut to the template and all the corners are stuck let's get this up over the sewing machine and start getting it all put together Right guys, so there's that foam cushion all inside the, uh, the upholstery cover now as well and it's all zipped up looking nice and neat. So I've got the second one to do now and I've just already been and got the fabric all cut down to shape. As you can see I've got the corners cut at both sides there. So this is now ready to again have the double sided tape put around the edges of each of the corners. And then we'll get back over to the sewing machine, start putting this one together and it'll have the upholstery all sorted out. So I'll get the double sided tape out, as I say, stick all these corners together and then we'll get them sewed together. Right guys, so that's the upholstery complete of those two remaining cushions that needed doing for the front sofa area of the conversion. And as you can see, they've all been upholstered in exactly the same material as I've used for the rear sofa bed area in the conversion as well. And again, these have all got the zips on, on all of the edges as well, so again, they can be removed. If you just wanted to bang them in a washing machine, give them a nice freshen up after a chip away, anything like that. As I say, they're all fully removable rather than how some people do it where they basically just staple material to apply base. I don't go down that route. I'd rather have fully removable, fully washable covers instead. So that's how I've done these covers and all the rest in the conversion as well. Right guys, so that'll do it for this week's episode. I was hoping to find a little bit more time to do a couple more jobs. But to be honest, there's not really a lot of jobs left to do in the conversion. And the jobs that are left... I need dry weather to get underneath the vehicle to do some plumbing on the waste and then it's a case of painting the van and it's pretty much going to be done after that so we really are starting to get down to the bare bones of any remaining jobs left but that's how I've fitted all of the push button locks in the overhead cabinet lockers with the fr uh, front faces on as well as you can see the locks just pop in nice and easily secure the door so they're not going to rattle open while they're on the move and then you just push it open and you get access to all of your cupboards and that's on all of the overhead cupboards in the living area 
as well as the bedroom area as well and the only thing I've got left to do now is I've got some little 10 mil corner trim that I'm just going to put around the edges of the flaps just to hide away any of the cuts that are where I've been cutting the plywood with the jigsaw so again just to neaten up the edges going around the trim all the way around like just to hide away these little nips that the jigsaws left in the wood as I say I've got some 10 mil corner trim so that's all going to get mitered and cut down and then just some strips going around the edges of the access flaps but that's all of the overhead cabinet, uh, cabinet lockers all in place now as well as all the upholstery as well as I showed doing the upholstery of these two cushions because I did gloss over doing the upholstery on the back ones and as I say I did put it out to you guys on YouTube if you wanted to see any and you said pretty much yes so that's how I've done all the cushions as well so that's both the rear u-shaped sofa area for the upholstered as well as the front living area for the upholstered now as well so that's all the upholstery done in the conversion so as i say come work wise left i've got five little jobs there on my scribble down to do list and most of those as i say involve either getting under the van to do some plumbing or to start the paint work on the outside if i'm going to actually respray this van as well so as i say that'll do it for this week's episode there might be a different project coming next week because as I say I'm really down to the bare bones of the jobs to do in here and I need to get this van started and in for its service and MOT as well so in the meantime I do have a second van that I've just recently purchased that I'm going to be starting doing some work on while this is going to be going in for service MOT things like that so I'll pop back next week to see what the new project's going to be for the channel as well as some further updates on this minibus conversion as we get to the very very final finishing touches of the conversion so thanks for watching hopefully i'll see you on next week's episode and i say next week's episode is probably going to be a new project that's going to be coming for the channel so i do pop back next week to see what that project's going to be as well as all future updates regarding this minibus conversion as it nears completion so thanks for watching if you made it through at the end consider giving it a good old thumbs up if you're new hit the subscribe button and don't forget there's a link in the top corner for the playlist showing this conversion throughout job by job weekend by weekend so click on the playlist if you haven't seen the previous jobs so hopefully i'll see you next week thanks for watching cheers